Hey everybody, this is David of Barnyard Bees. Every now and then, you have a swarm of bees that lands on one of your existing colonies and you're on a nuke, like in this case. Uh, this, this is a little hive right here and I'm surprised that they didn't take over because a lot of times that's what will happen. This, this right here was a, it was a split I'd done and had a new queen, very small colony starting out, you know, to grow it out and start over again as, you know, when we sell nukes. So what happened, this decent sized swarm, it was bigger, more of us went in the box. I didn't get the first, first part filmed, but it happens occasionally they'll land on a box. Now, had they landed in the front, they would have probably went in, killed the queen, took over the colony, and that's what would happen. So, what I did in this case, I got a, a nuke ready, put the frames in, I found a, a frame that uh, had some eggs on it from another colony, put it in this five frame nuke right here, and put it right beside it and brushed a few of them in to begin with. And I'm trying to keep an eye out for the queen, but I'm not seeing her yet. Now, keep in mind too, there can always be more than one queen in a, in a swarm. If anyone ever tells you there's only one queen per swarm, sometimes there is, sometimes there's multiple queens. I got a previous video where it shows I pulled out uh, I think seven, seven queens or something like that of one big swarm. So, so there could be multiple queens in this. And what happens uh, when one hive swarms, it will provoke other hives that are ready to swarm to swarm too. I've seen it happen. They'll swarm through the air and I've seen them come out of other colonies and join up with them and take off. And at that point, they're okay with that with multiple queens until they find their destination, then they'll start killing off the queens and then one will make it. Now, we're not exactly sure how they pick that queen, whether it's the first one in the box or, uh, but what I, what I think is they know by the scent of the best queen. And so they'll pick out, that's my, that's what I think. That's my uh, thought on it is that they'll pick out the best queen by scent, and that's what they go with, and then they, they just kill out kill the rest. So we're trying to just provoke these to go in there, get them started, push them in a little bit, keep an eye out for little clusters possibly, and once they start, the march is on, and they'll go right over there to it. We just gotta kinda just keep pushing them just to get them started. Usually they'll take off on their own. You'll see them fan once the queen pops in there. Or it doesn't, she doesn't have to actually pop in there. Okay, as you can see, see where I raked them. Okay, see how they're fanning now and heading that direction? Let's just see what they do. I've done this many times. They're heading this way. Once they signal to the others, the march is on. I just happened to uh, come down here and see this. I was just looking around, drive. A lot of times I just drive around the bee yard and always looking for something happening. And usually there is. Usually you can, you about can't drive around one time without having to stop and take care of something because there's always something happening, always. Now it may take them a while. It's not always instantly, but the more that we can push over there. And another way that you can tell that they're a swarm, uh, beard, <clears throat> this is not beard and bees, by the way. If anyone thinks it's beard and bees, it's not beard and bees. If they would, they would be, <clears throat> they would be bearding on the, on the entrance 
side, not the opposite side on the back. This is a swarm. And but another way is how calm they are and gentle. They don't have anything to protect. So I mean, if I if I if I push them too hard, I'll get stung. There, I took one just one right there on the finger because where I just pushed right them just a little bit too too hard. They'll go. It'll just take some time. We've got some over here. You don't always have to just rake them. Let's see if I can get away with this. And I'm looking for it like a cluster too at the same time. If we can find a cluster and we'll know we got our queen. Not seeing her. When you do this, um, you just got to be careful not to push up against them too hard because that's when they sting you, and they do get me sometimes. You don't have to do this, by the way. If you, uh, you know, especially, I don't want to do stuff like this in the beginner beekeepers think oh i can never be a key beekeeper i don't i couldn't do that you don't have to do this this is just i'm just speeding them up a little bit just helping them in there and especially while i'm making the video so everyone can see the the process a little bit faster because this you know just leaving them here if you're in this situation well just get a few started in there use if you got to be careful use your hive tool and just scrape a few in there. Once you see a march, walk away from it. Come back in the evening and they'll all be in there. So, they're going. It just takes them a while to find it. So, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna leave them alone. Uh, I'm gonna close this gap up just a little bit. Watch not to squish them. Give them just a little tiny hole there. And the rest of those will follow suit. They'll go in. Uh, now, now, being now, I, I don't even have to move this now. All I got to do is just scoot it over just a little bit, and they'll be fine right where they're at. They'll be fine. That's about it, folks. Just wanted to share that with you. Come across it, and so you can see my cage here, where I, where I had the, the queen in, where I released that new queen there. That's why that cage is up there. So that's about it, folks. Don't forget, please help share our videos, like, and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Barnard Bees.